Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship, when called upon to defend and liberate. They said, yes. They found courage to rise with every son, loyalty toward their country, discipline for every command. Even in the darkest hours, they said, yes. They cherished and fought for freedom, so those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written, they said, yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello. hello. And it's Memorial Day weekend. And we hope you are all well and um, at home watching church. And we're going to start with Jesus Messiah. Worship with. Yes, please worship. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah name above all names blessed Redeemer Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread. The wine broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah. 
Join me in the responsive reading. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the cloud. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, tender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your... When you marched the wilderness, the earthquake, and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God. The ancient heaven, you sent forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy place, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Hear the good news today. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children. All the world, the spirit of your through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One. This is Memorial Day, weekend. All weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, lots of families get together and think about Memorial Day. I even have written a poster about it. Memorial Day. Kids, can you say that? Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow is actually Memorial Day. 
So I'd like you to turn and talk to your parents. What is the meaning of Memorial Day? Why do we have this holiday? Turn and talk to your parents. Say, why do we have this holiday? So on this weekend, do you get together with family? Do you have a picnic? Do you visit the cemetery to decorate graves of your family or soldiers of, uh, that have been in the Army or the Marines and have served our country? Well, before we called it Memorial Day, it was called Decoration Day. And that was clear back in 1868 after the Civil War. And it was started to honor all the soldiers that gave their lives in the war to settle differences and also to keep their family safe. And people then put decorations and flowers on their graves to thank them back then. And that was over 150 years old or 150 years ago. Soldiers take a pledge when they join the service to fight for our freedoms, like the freedom to worship God, because they care about you. Those soldiers care very much about your freedom to worship, and your freedom in this country is important. They show Jesus' love through sacrifice. So I would like to show you something to kind of bring this together. So this is my son's uniform from when he was in the army. He just got out about four years, or he served four years and just got out last year. But guess what? He's still back in Afghanistan working for the army. And I wanted to show you this because in this soldier uniform, first of all, it's very heavy and it um, has a lots and lots of pockets in it. I was counting last night, and I think there's like 20 pockets in this, in this uniform. Um, and so, and of course, the hat is very important to keep them from um, getting sunburned and things like that. Um, but what's important about this uniform is it's not only just clothing, but it's a way to carry everything that the soldier needs. So, he my son, whose name is Tim, taught me a little bit about the difference between Veterans Day, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. So in November, we celebrate Veterans Day, and we honor the soldiers who, are, who have either fought or are, who have fought in wars, have served this, in the service, and then we also honor on Memorial Day, soldiers who have actually given their lives to fight for this country. So there's a little difference. It's kind of like Veterans Day, we recognize all the veterans, and they are still alive. But on this day, we recognize those who have died for our country to keep us safe. So I want to tell you just a little story about pockets in uniforms. So um, during World War II, there was a battle called the Battle of Normandy, and it took place on a beach. And two days before the battle, thousands of small Bibles, maybe um, even smaller than this, were given to men who were going into battle in a couple of days. And Chaplain George Russell Barber, that was his name, Chaplain Barber, gave them to all of the soldiers and went on 11 different ships just to give these Bibles out, and they read Psalm 23 out of these Bibles. Psalm 23 starts, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the men were kind of scared to go into this large battle. They knew that many of them could lose their lives. So you know what they did? They kept these Bibles close to their hearts. And in this uniform, it actually can fit. There's a sideways pocket and it can fit close to their hearts. And so they carried the word of God with them as they went into battle. And the men found strength from the word of God as they did their job. Hundreds of soldiers were killed on that beach that day. And one of the things the chaplain saw, because he was there, was all of these little Bibles floating in the water. And the chaplain, even though he was so sad, so many men were killed, he was so thankful that they had their Bibles with them and that they believed in God. 
and that they knew that God's love would save them and take them to heaven. So we honor these soldiers today, and actually tomorrow is Memorial Day, as well as soldiers who have given their lives for their country in other wars, kind of like a gift of love. So here's one thing you can do tomorrow that I bet you you may not have heard about. So in 2000, the year 2000, President Clinton signed into law the National Moment of Remembrance Act in the year 2000. And every American is asked to stop for one minute at three o'clock in the afternoon and think about the sacrifices made by these men and women who served our country and gave their lives for this country. So if you have an American flag in your house, you can hold it up for this minute of time at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And when the minute is over, pray for our soldiers who give so much love by risking their lives to keep us safe. And they don't just go into battle. They help us when we need them. We've seen them help after a flood. And we've seen many soldiers help during this COVID-19 virus, putting up hospitals, getting supplies out. So let's close with the soldier's prayer, which actually is taken from Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. In your word, good those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. In your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. The first reading for us today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 1. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has sent by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, 
Peter and John and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brother. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the book of 1 Peter, chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Finally, one last reading from the Gospel according to John. After Jesus has spoken these words, he looked up into heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him all authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world exists. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but I am asking on behalf of those you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one.
video started out with the word unprecedented. Unprecedented. You hear that word all over the place right now. It's in news reports, it's in magazine articles, it's on commercials, it's in social media. Unprecedented. How many times do you think you have heard the word unprecedented in the last two months? How many times do you think it's been said throughout history? Let me turn from that for a second, however, and go back to a verse from Scripture for us today. From 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Let me say that again. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as if something strange were happening to you. You see, I think that it would be important for us to remember on this Memorial Day weekend as our country honors and remembers the sacrifice, the bravery, the courage, and the heroism of our soldiers, our sailors, our Marines, and our airmen. I think it would be important for us to remember that whether we've served in the military or not, there's always been a battle to engage. Just that it comes to us from different places and in different forms. Now, I wanted to make sure that I didn't misuse this text from 1 Peter today when I was going to be preaching about this. So I tried to look up in a bunch of commentaries what exactly was the fiery ordeal that was being talked about in 1 Peter. And here's what I found out, is that nobody really knows for sure. So I guess that means that we have some freedom to be able to apply that in a whole bunch of different ways. For example, his name may have been George or Michael or David, or maybe it sounded a little more ethnic, something that was Irish or Italian. The year would have been 1929. The month would have been August. And there was a sudden run on the bank in the United States of America. And the stock market plummeted. Businesses began to close. And our hero, whatever his name happened to be, found himself out of work, but he was not alone. Before the Great Depression would end, global unemployment would top 24%. How did we ever make it through that? Friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family member to family member, we reached out to one another. Unprecedented? You bet. A fiery ordeal? Unquestionable. But the church was still there. Bolstered by a faith in Jesus and empowered by the Spirit. Even when we weren't sure of our own resources. The church loved people. And the church trusted in a God who sent his son and was able to feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And George or Michael or David or what other ethnic sound of name that may have been not only endured but overcame the battle against the Great Depression. And the church, because it's not a building, is still there. The next year, His name was John Benjamin. Actually, most folks just called him Ben, but some people called him J.B. His wife's name was Grace. 
and they farmed the dry plains of southeastern Nebraska. But 1930 brought a dust bowl. And they planted, and nothing came up. They planted again the next year. And the winds that whipped through the plains and stirred up the dust in storms and huge clouds didn't just whip through the plains, but brought the door underneath their door jams of their houses and through the window pane in their wall. And they planted again. The drought stifling and the land still unproductive. You're wondering who these people were. They were my grandparents. And they were not alone. They fought a different enemy. Unprecedented? Without a doubt. A fiery ordeal? Without question. But friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family member to family member, they not only endured, but they overcame. Bolstered by a faith in Jesus, which was passed down to their children, of whom two became pastors. And that becomes part of my life. Empowered by the Spirit, here we are. Because the church is still there. A decade later, his name was Gary. He was my great uncle. He served with the armed forces of the United States of America after we entered World War II. He served in the European theater. He witnessed the fear and the atrocity of war. Incidentally, he was not alone. By the end of the war, over 12,200,000 of our citizens would have served in that battle, in that war. Nearly 10% of the entire population of the country. They did not bow to They did not flinch in the the face of sacrifice. Some of them that I've talked to told me that soldiers weren't necessarily brave. They just didn't want to let the guy next to them down. And back home again in the state, women entered the workforce in unprecedented numbers. They endured rationings of which we haven't seen the like. And manufacturing shifted its production. And all the while, friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family member to family member, we reached out to one another. And the church was there. Helping. Comforting bolstered by a faith in the Prince of Peace and a belief that one day we would beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Empowered by the Spirit, unprecedented, you could say so. A fiery ordeal, pretty much acknowledged by all. I could go on and on about Korea, or Vietnam, or Afghanistan, or Iraq. It would be appropriate today, but that would be only about war. And there are other fiery ordeals besides those. I could talk today about the fight against racial injustice, about poverty, about the war on drug addiction. I could talk about 9-11. I could talk about how in the last decade, we're down to only 159,000 Christians being martyred per year. which is an improvement over the 330,000 per year that took place during the Cold War. 
but the church is still here. Still bolstered by a faith in Jesus. Still empowered by the Spirit. So today we fight a different battle. Today we find ourselves in a different war. Some have called it a battle against an unseen enemy. The virus too small to see. But it has brought our economy to a standstill. Forced millions to unemployment lines and socially separated and socially distanced us from one another. That is true. And there have been casualties. Some who have died in hospitals, on ventilators, isolated and alone. But I've got a question for you today. How many of you believe that the church is still the church? I say yes. How many of you believe that we are still bolstered by faith in Jesus? I say yes. How many of you believe that we are still empowered by the Spirit? I say yes again. And I believe, just less, I, I believe that just like all of the other examples, we will not only endure, but we will overcome. And while all of these things are unprecedented, the church was still there giving hope, giving comfort, giving relief. Not because we are so great, but because the God we serve is so great. I guess what I'm saying is, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as if something strange were happening to you. Just like our soldiers and our sailors and our Marines and our airmen, we have fought before. And we didn't endure because the fight was small. It has always been unprecedented. And we didn't overcome we didn't overcome because it, the fight was easy. It has always been a fiery ordeal. The church has lasted and helped and pushed forward because our God is bigger than any enemy. No matter how big, no matter how small. And because we know that the way to victory happens through him and with each other, friend to friend, neighbor to neighbor, family member with family member. We know how the faith of Jesus is passed. We know how the Spirit is spread. Perhaps it is spread most effectively in the way that we're doing it today. It's not spread in buildings because the church is not a building. It's spread in homes with family members teaching and praying with one another. And with that faith and that knowledge, let's hear the end of that text again. You know, after Paul says, Beloved, after he says, Let us not be surprised at the fiery ordeal. He ends that text by saying, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert. And after we have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Will himself again restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. You know, faith in Jesus has always seemed like it needed to be unprecedented because the fight we have fought has always seemed to be a fiery ordeal. But we are still the church. Bolstered by faith in Christ. And empowered by the Spirit. We go Hide the light 
shall I fear? You crush me in the knee, underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful, you are faithful, you and nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful, you are faithful, you are faithful. I know who stands behind The God of angel armies Is always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine The God of angel armies Is always by my side I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side the god of angel armies is always by my side let's confess together we believe I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'd like to uh, thank you for continuing your, your offerings. There is information about how my dad announcement this time as well. First of all, uh, the weekend of June 6th, 7th, coming up here in just a couple weeks, we will return to in-person worship. But along with that come a, a couple changes in our schedule, um, and we want to make sure that we are doing this in a way that is as safe and responsible as possible, and yet at the same time, we are so excited to be able to gather together in person. Uh, so what that looks like, we will continue to have um, 
Saturday and Sunday services, as was true in the past. So there will be a Saturday night traditional service. There will be an 825 traditional service again on Sunday morning. And then at 1035, we will have our contemporary worship. One change, our streaming service will now be at 1035 beginning on June 7th. And so that's a little bit of a change. And then we will also repeat that contemporary service on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, the reason we're doing that and adding that additional service is the seating is limited. I'm, I'm looking at uh, the Celebration Center right now, and it looks different. Uh, not only do we have cameras here in the middle, but we've got seats set up uh, to make sure that we can be responsible in the way that we, we social distance as we worship. And this means, again, seating is limited. And so we want to uh, encourage you, one, if your health is compromised or if you are, are vulnerable, we would encourage you to consider uh, continuing to worship with us in the way we are right now to do that virtually. Uh, we would also ask you to consider attending possibly the Wednesday night service because once the seats are full, uh, that's it. Uh, we, we are limited in the number of seats we have for each service. And more information, uh, specific information may come out um, between now and then, but we wanted to make sure and let you know that we will begin those services on the weekend of June 6th, 7th, and also adding that service. So, also, this is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we just would uh, mind you to be thankful for those that have served, and especially those that have given their lives, but also to take comfort in the promise of Christ's resurrection. Why? And at this time, we'll offer prayer. We have an offer for you this morning. We do. Excellent. Yeah. Life has been difficult lately. And there are often times when it is better for me to go outside and just enjoy the beauty of God's creation. Because it really is a sign that he loves us. That he's here to carry our burdens. I'd like to share a song with you called Carry You. God of grace and glory, we remember this weekend all who have served. We give thanks, honor, 
and especially for their sacrifice, so that we might be safe, so that we might live free, receive them and continue, Lord, in your mercy, God of grace and glory. Help us to remember in these unprecedented days that you are still a God who rules over unprecedented fiery order. Help us to remember that we are still your church, called to serve in the unprecedented fiery order. We trust you and ask that you would strengthen God of help us speak. please lead us to expand our Father. God of grace and glory, this day for the marriage of Emma Schutte and Nolan, that you would guide them and lead them through the years so that their relationship would honor you and be a marriage that is an example to others, be lifelong and direct. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace and glory, we pray this day for the baptism of Zoe Rose Bedalek. Bless her throughout her life that she may always live in the confidence that she has been claimed by you. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace and glory, we ask your blessing on all those who are ill or otherwise infirm. Also, we pray for comfort and healing for the families who have experience the loss of a loved one, especially the family of Janice Tim. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. How great Thou art. And when I think Sparing, sent him to die. 
Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come. With shout of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great you are Then sings my soul, my soul God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Filled with peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then sings my. Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship when called upon to defend and liberate. They said yes. They found courage to rise with every sun, loyalty toward their country, discipline for every command. Even in the darkest hours, they said yes. They cherished and fought for freedom, so those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written. They said, yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them, saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. 